Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Wise Decision Maker Show, where we help you make the wisest and most profitable decisions. My name is Dr. Gleb Sipurski. I'm the CEO of Disaster Avoidance Experts, the future of work consultancy that sponsors the Wise Decision Maker Show. And today with me here is Alex Howland, the president and co-founder of Verbella. And we'll get later to what Verbella is all about. But I want to start by asking you, Alex, what do you think is the benefit of the, using the metaverse for remote work? And there's, of course, lots of people who are doing remote work without the metaverse. And you are focusing on the benefits of the metaverse of virtual reality for remote work. So tell me a little bit more about your perspective there. Absolutely. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Happy to share my perspective on the benefits of the metaverse for, for remote work. Uh, my background is as an organizational psychologist. So I mm -hmm. often kind of structure things at the individual team and organizational levels. Uh, and I think about the benefits in, in those in that construct of individual team and organization uh, element. So starting with the individual, uh, we take a look at the benefits people have found during the pandemic of being able to work from anywhere. Uh, they've really enjoyed that freedom to be able to work from anywhere. Some people are have moved or closer to family, have better uh, support with their child care or elderly parent care, those, those sorts of things. Um, but there's also been downsides uh, for the individual, you know, feelings of loneliness, feelings of not really feeling connected with the community uh, that, that you're a part of um, at, at your organization. Uh, so we think, how can we give people kind of that in-person experience, the benefits of being together, having the water cooler moments, having that sense of presence uh, with your colleagues without being uh, physically at the office, you know, having to commute to the office, the, those sorts of things. At the team level, uh, you know, we think about team development and, and some of the history and the, and the things that have been done for team, team development. Oftentimes those include games, thing, things like uh, taking a group to a ropes course or an orienteering uh, you know, exercise as a team and facilitating some of those elements. The metaverse is, is really built on gaming you know, technologies that you can really leverage um, mm. specifically for uh, team development, I think in unique and exciting uh, ways uh, that we're just starting to scratch the, the surface. So that's an example at the team level and, and maybe at the organizational level, we think about uh, a the cost of not having brick and mortar. Can we have the benefits of that kind of shared space that you get from the office, but without actually having to pay uh, mm -hmm. for, for that space? And can we still bring our teams together and having that sense of inclusivity and the ability to recruit from anywhere, uh, and uh, really, really allowing the company to shape the culture it's trying to you know manifest within the organization by the design and how they operate uh in in the metaverse and make sure there's access to leadership and and those sorts of things so i could go on for for probably <laughs> hours uh, on this topic but those are examples in each of the buckets at the individual team and organizational level uh, that we give a lot of thought about in terms of the benefits of remote work in the metaverse mm -hmm. So when we're thinking about, let's talk about the individual level. I have definitely spoken to some of my clients who I hope transition to hybrid work and remote work and figuring this out, who experimented with some metaverse move options, but then they found that wearing, let's say, an Oculus headset for you know eight hours a day is just exhausting. Not doable. And so, right. So tell me a little bit more about the challenges of for the individual level, for an individual who would be yeah. asked to engage in the metaverse, what is the problem? What? How do you solve that challenge? Right. So I think it's a very common uh, idea. This idea that the metaverse equals putting on a three D VR headset or AR headset, and I kind of hardly disagree. I, I don't think you you have to be in a headset to be in a, in a metaverse type experience. So at Rubella, uh, you know, I'd say 99% of the time, we're actually just on our desktop, right? Interfacing mm -hmm. with the virtual world through 2D interfaces, but yet still having that great sense of, of immersion. So I think there'll be times where it makes sense to put the VR headset on. You know, we do things like training with the military where being in the headset really makes a difference. And there's 3D printed objects, so you get the haptics associated with the visuals. 
in there. It really makes sense in those training situations. But on a day-to-day -day basis, in terms of being present with, with your colleagues uh, in a remote area, I'd actually mm -hmm. recommend against the headset uh, and recommend a more 2D mode, whether it be on uh, you know, typically desktop is what I suggest, but I also think we need a lot of mobile interfaces uh, in, into these metaverse experiences as, as well. Hmm. Now, we can't talk about the metaverse and the few remote work without talking about some of the controversy with Meta itself, the company. And uh, there has been, it has been swallowing up a lot of air about the metaverse sure, sure has <laughs> and it's not has not looked very successful from a lot of commentators in terms of horizon worlds it's virtual world so given that metaver that the meta the company facebook has been swallowing up a lot of air how do you see the metaverse proceeding in the future with this big giant player as something that doesn't seem very successful and perhaps causing some disenchantment with the metaverse more broadly. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think some of the element points to the challenges ahead uh, in, the, in some of the difficulty and complexities in terms of moving uh, this, this field forward. And, and truthfully, I'm excited you know, that Meta is investing heavily in this space. I think it actually helps mm -hmm. move the whole industry forward. Um, They've just kind of started at it uh, where we've been doing it since uh, 2010, 2012, originally got our, our first uh, funding. So there's a lot of elements that, that go into making this uh, successful in, in a number of different areas. And it's a reason why we specifically focus kind of on enterprise and education sector uh, with our mm -hmm. offering in that we're not trying to boil the ocean. We're not trying to do everything for it for everyone uh, like Meta is, is trying to do. And we can really focus on uh, kind of the enterprise and, and think of it from a um, multi-domain, you know, multi multidisciplinary background in terms of what will this, will this take? And I see Meta really focusing a lot on the technological challenges uh, mm. of doing this, but I think the psychological elements uh, are equally, if not more important, because the metaverse at the end of the day is all about people, people and community, right? So we really need to be taking the angle of what is the value, right, to the individual, the team, and the organization uh, that that makes this successful uh, going forward. And there'll be lots of trials and tribulations, just like they were, you know, in creation of, of uh, the World Wide Web, you know, the mm -hmm. internet, sure. uh, in, in doing all of this. Um, what's unique is that we have real companies doing this on a day-to-day -day basis and have been doing it for, for quite some years that we get to learn and iterate uh, mm. over time uh, based, based on those. We'd be happy to share some of those uh, success stories. Maybe specifically our, our now sister company, EXP Realty, has quite, a, quite an interesting story. Yeah, why don't you tell us, so you've been working on this for over a decade. Tell me a little bit more about the origin of Verbella and how Absolutely. you came to be where you are and what does your product currently look like for someone who wants to remote work and doesn't want to put on a headset for nine hours a day? Yeah, absolutely. So I got started when I was pursuing my PhD in organizational psychology. I was taking classes like... Um, individual and in, in team assessments, uh, cultural diversity, you know, learning about uh, doing business in a global economy, uh, online, you know, learning and development. And while most of my classes were uh, in person, I had some online and really thought we were missing kind of that, that community element that you got in line, you know, in person that you just didn't get uh, in a remote sector. Uh, so I saw virtual worlds and actually how clinicians were using virtual worlds effectively for clinical work, uh, things like treating pho phobias and whatnot, and thought, hey, we can we can develop global communities where we can have peer-to-peer -peer learning and leadership development, as well as create games and simulations that allow us to set, assess leadership competencies and give feedback based on those behaviors in the virtual world to help people improve their leadership skills in a safe uh, environment with people from from all over the world. Um, myself and some colleagues were fortunate to win a couple million dollars in grant funding from GMAT, mm -hmm. the owner of the GMAT exam to get to business school uh, to get started. And we did that in partnership with the University of California, San Diego. Uh, so that's where that's where we got started. 
Uh, and since then, we we continue to work with a number of um, uh, universities. Uh, Stanford's been running global exec ed courses in the platform with mm -hmm. cohorts from about 300 logging in from over 100 countries in the platform. Mm -hmm. Uh, MIT is doing some some work in there, ASU, uh, as well as some global universities uh, as well. Our sister company, EXP Realty, uh, actually extended our vision a bit in the sense that, hey, we can actually run entire companies in the metaverse. We weren't calling it the metaverse back then, uh, but in virtual worlds and in these platforms, uh, the founder of EXP had... Uh, you know, had a tough time during the 2008 downturn. So we, when he went to go rebuild his business in 2009, he gave himself the business constraint that I'm not going to have any brick and mortar offices. He sent everyone home with a laptop and said, hey, we're going to engage in virtual virtual worlds. And that's how we're going to grow our, our business. They were in some other virtual worlds before Verbella, but came to Verbella uh, in 2016. They were 1,000 agents, 1,000 agents. And here, six years later, they're now, they just surpassed 85,000 agents. So 1,000 oh. to 85,000 agents uh, on the platform. Um, so there's an ex example of the benefit at the organizational level, uh, the ability to grow and mm -hmm. grow without uh, fixed costs of, of brick and mortar. Uh, those savings allow them to put together a financial model that's really good for the realtor, their, their mm. customer, um, which helps them attract uh, very quickly. They're also able to expand into 20 new countries during a global pandemic without stepping foot you know, on, on a um, plane. plane. Um, and you know, they're actually profitable compared to some of the other, you know, maybe startup uh, um, real estate companies that you might have heard of Redfin or, <laughs> or uh, Compass, you know, who, who are actually losing a lot of money. EXP is actually profitable, part, you know, certainly partly because they operate uh, in, in the metaverse. So mm -hmm. that's all great at the business level. Um, mm -hmm. What's really exciting me at the individual level is they've actually been voted Glassdoor's best place to work the last five years in a row. They're now number four uh, on the list um, this past this past year. So it's not only working for uh, the organization, but it's also working for the individuals, which again mm -hmm. is uh, the piece that I think is is so important. Uh, so people are yeah logging into the metaverse each day on their computer. I don't know if it'd be helpful to share a screen or something. I get. I'd be happy to uh, share my screen and give you a sense of what it looks like if that makes sense. Um, but they log in, they might be doing onboarding, they might be doing training and development, they might be getting support with transactions, they might be attending a mastermind uh, meeting, but it's really about community uh, and having community mm -hmm. both among uh, the employees as well as, you know, in this case, their customer who's the, the realtor. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, obviously we're working closely with, with EXP Realty, but work with a number of organizations um, you know, like uh, some of the universities I, I mentioned, um, PwC, Fujitsu, uh, VMware, so it's technology organizations, consultancies, accounting firms, um, kind of all over the map, in terms of healthcare organizations, uh, J&J, &J, uh, lots of different folks coming in for different elements, usually of the employee experience uh, in mm -hmm. this hybrid and, and remote sec yeah, sector. So when you think about, let's say, companies like J&J, &J, which we have some people working in the office and have some people working remotely, yeah. how do you combine that in the virtual world experience? Yeah. So I, I think, I actually think hybrid is probably a lot harder than uh, fully remote, right? Because now you have- Yes, this, of course. So that's this, why I'm asking, yes. <laughs> this blended uh, experience. We also think a little bit about, uh, you know, a, a hub and spoke model, right? Where even those who are in an office, oftentimes they're working for an organization with multiple offices, right? Mm -hmm. So you already have all these sub offices, these what I consider a, a spoke. What I think the, there's opportunity for the metaverse is, is creating actually your hub, uh, where the hub can mm -hmm. be uh, the metaverse itself. And now your physical offices are the spokes. Um, so we're doing some interesting work with PwC and um, some of their innovation centers, uh, which we, they have innovation centers all over the world, uh, but they're actually creating a, a central 
metaverse environment in, in Rubella, which has, uh, you know, actually digital twins of each of their buildings in the different parts of uh, the regions all, all over the world. And it's a place mm -hmm. for the people in these respective innovation centers to actually come together and, and have more of a united culture feel. Uh, also ideate and share ideas with each other. Uh, so this idea where we think innovation often lies between silos. Uh, we think the metaverse can actually break down some of those silos, bring in unique, diverse ideas and perspectives from people uh, in different parts of uh, the world uh, with different you know, backgrounds and, and those sorts of things who can bring unique unique perspectives. Um, so that's just, just an example. Uh, you know, another example, I, I think the, the people who are remote often feel like second class citizens uh, sure. <laughs> in those hybrid meetings. Uh, so we actually push our clients that, hey, if, if it's going to be a hybrid meeting, actually everyone log in, right? Everyone log into the metaverse. Now you're leveling, leveling the playing field. No one has yeah. advantage, you know, by, by being in the office. I think it's important that leaders spend time in there too, because- sure. You know they need to be accessible to their employees and obviously there's bias to the people who are close to them you know if they're in, in the physical office where if they can have collisions and, and run-ins with different employees in different parts of the country or the world uh in the metaverse now people can can get access uh, in a more equitable way uh with, with leadership Okay, I wanted when you're talking about issues of bias and so on, I was wondering about diversity, equity, inclusion in the metaverse. I just published an article in Forbes about challenges for people with disabilities in terms of the mandate to return to the office from many companies. Yeah. We've seen that compared to before the pandemic, the rate of employment for people with disabilities is higher by 3.5 percent and that's numbers that came out quite recently yep. and by comparison for people without disabilities it's still 1.1 percent lower than before the pandemic and the main differentiating factor is remote work that yep. facilitates people working with who have disabilities tell me a little bit more about diversity equity inclusion in the metaverse how it impacts people with disabilities how it impacts people of different yep. ethnicities, gender, and so on. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I, I think there's great opportunity for for uh, DNI initiatives, and, and we're seeing a number of them uh, in, in the platform. Some of the ones I, I were just mentioning, this, this idea of building empathy just by connecting people who typically don't mm -hmm. have an opportunity to come together. I think there's opportunity for people to show up um, in known for their ability versus disability uh, in mm -hmm. the platform because they can choose how they uh, show up. Uh, oh. And, and um, that will vary by the community too. If there's someone in the wheelchair, right? They might love being able to run around or walk around the campus with their avatar. There might be others who's, you know, that might be too emotional. You know, they'd rather have, you know, it, be in a wheelchair uh, in, in the environment as well. So mm -hmm. I think we'll, we'll learn even some of the individual differences uh, within different different communities, but this idea for for access, breaking down the the barrier to get in and have equal opportunities show up how you'd like to be be perceived to uh, be seen, uh, is is a, I think a great advantage of the metaverse. Mm. Obviously, reducing the obstacles and challenges of just physically getting uh, to to the office, I, I think, is uh, really helpful. And then the choice, mm. you know, that the avatar provides in terms of uh, how you want to show up, and and that might be the more traditional DNI things that we think about. But I also think about different personality types, right? Mm -hmm. We we see and observe uh, introverts. Um, you know, they tell us, I I don't know why, but I feel more comfortable speaking up in this environment. I never mm -hmm. speak this much, you know, in, in a meeting. Or uh, we've had doctors and nurses, you know, in the environment, and and. Uh, nurse stands up to a doctor and catches herself midway. It's like, oh my gosh, I have never stood up to a doctor like I just mm. did. Uh, and I don't know why, again, I, I feel comfortable uh, in doing that. So I think there's there's great, great opportunities uh, as well as I think there's great opportunities for, for research uh, in the space in terms of understanding, um, you know, implicit bias as, as well as um, mm. overt bias. Uh, in the in the environment, and a lot, a lot of research should be done. I think Stanford's uh, Jeremy Ballison's, um 
lab has done a, a bit of work in in that space, uh, which is which is interesting. Um, so yeah, lots of lots of opportunity. Obviously, you know, show up as you'd like. With that, you know, creating an avatar system that that suits everyone is is a big feat, and we invest sure. you know pretty heavily in our in our avatar system, but. Um, you know, making sure there are non-binary, you know, options, make sure the options are representative of, of different, uh, you know, ethnicities uh, and, and backgrounds, same with the clothing options. So it's actually a big investment uh, to to do it right, particularly, I think, on the enterprise uh, side. But, it, you know, it's an investment that must be done and, and one that, that we're continuously making uh, so that people do feel like they have a choice in terms of how they, they show up. Uh, in in these environments, yeah, that makes sense, especially since you're expanding a number of companies and your platform are expanding globally. Yeah, so that absolutely. makes it more difficult. Absolutely. Tell me a little bit of how long is the onboarding and learning curve for people who are starting to use the uh, Verbellus product? Yeah, so we give a lot of thought to accessibility in general. It's it's part of the reason why we're more desktop focused than we are. Uh, VR focus because most people don't have a VR headset, you know, at, at this point. Uh, but we also try to make it, you know, really, really easy to use without having, you know, any gaming experience or, or whatnot. Uh, there's lots of easy uh, navigation options in the environment, whether it's point and click with the, with your mouse or use the arrows in your keyboard, or if you're a gamer, you might use the WASD, you know, key. So we try to pe meet people where they're at. Uh, mm -hmm. and make them feel comfortable in, in the technology pretty pretty quickly. There are a lot of tools that overlap with uh, tools that you get here on Zoom, things like webcam share, screen share, those sorts of things. And we try to use you know, the universal symbols and, and whatnot. So it's, it's uh, very comparable when you go to use those, those tools. So for most people, it, it's, it's a, particularly to be a participant, it's a matter of uh, you know, minutes, not hours. Um, what I will say is we want people to get to a state of flow, you know, in the environment, if they are going to work in there regularly, which that might take, you know, a couple of weeks, right? I want you to go into the metaverse, not think about being in the metaverse. I want you to go there and feel, feel present with your team and your company and feel like you're part of, you know, that office or, or the campus community and, and whatnot. So, you know, I don't know if it's a week or, or three weeks or, or what it is, but I, I want it to be so natural that you you kind of forget that you're uh, even in a different dimension. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if you give an example, my three-year-old comes into my physical office and she sees my virtual office and my virtual couch and those things. She's like, oh, dad, you're in your office and, you know, <laughs> there's your couch. And in her three-year-old brain, that virtual couch doesn't mean much different than the physical couch, you know, <laughs> in, in our living room, right? It's just natural. Uh, and it's actually interesting how, maybe even scary, how our brains are easily tricked to having that mm. sense of immersion and presence uh, in there and, and kind of forgetting about the, the kind of like the digital nature. I compare it to reading a book, right? You're not looking at the black and the white on the page, you're getting immersed in the story. Uh, in very similar case in in the enterprise metaverse, we want you there. You want we want you to be productive. We want you to feel present with your team, close to your team, and, and run your successful business. Excellent. Now, as we wrap up, is there anything else you wish to share about the metaverse or Verbella that we haven't yet talked about in the remote work? Yeah, I, I would say it's it's not too early. Um, so obviously, these technologies are going to continue to get better and better. I strongly mm -hmm. recommend people giving it a, a try and, and do more than kick the tires, right? Really actually spend some time in, in different tools. And there are a lot of different tools uh, out there. Uh, obviously, I'll give a plug for us. You can go on our website, verbella.com and download for free and get into our open campus, interact with folks, have a meeting with your team, uh, those sorts of things. We also have a platform called framevr.io, which is entirely web-based. You can get in there uh, also for free and in, in interact with your teams. And there are a number of other other elements. It's a get in and, and, and get a sense. Um, and then you know, might say, oh yeah, I can see where these are going. I can see how it'll get better you know, over time. But then a reminder that, hey, we built a multi-billion dollar business in our sister company, EXP Realty uh, on these platforms. So you know, I, th I think it's easy to say, oh, it's too early. It's not here yet. 
Meta needs to invest, you know, 10 more billion be before we're there. Uh, but I'd argue that uh, a lot of the benefits are already there if you dig in, uh, lean in, and you're going to be in a much better place as the technology do does get better uh, by by leaning in uh, now. Uh, so maybe I'll leave the audience uh, with that. We hope to see you in, in the virtual world. Give it a try, whether it's ours or, or another, and, and experiment and engage with your colleagues. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for sharing that, Alex. And thank I you. want to and I want to thank the listeners and viewers for checking out this episode of the Wise Decision Maker Show. Again, my name is Dr. Gleb Sapursky. I'm the CEO of Disaster Avoidance Experts, the future of work consultancy that sponsors the Wise Decision Maker Show. Please make sure to leave a review wherever you check this out and iTunes, Amazon, and please make sure to subscribe to the show. I look forward to seeing you next episode of the Wise Decision Maker Show. And in the meantime, the wisest, most profitable decisions to you, my friends.